By the end of this video, you'll have your project set up for online multiplayer in VR using Unity Netcode. Now, if you're new to multiplayer and want a quick overview on how multiplayer networking works, I highly recommend checking our video on multiplayer fundamentals linked down below. And without further ado, let's hop right into it. We're starting with our base VR project, which is set up with the Oculus SDK, the latest version, version 56. And you'll find the link to this same project in the description below. Okay, now we have to add two packages to the project. So let's click on window, let's click on package manager and switch to unity registry now you want to look for netcode for game objects and that's the one that you want to install so you'll have the install button right here as you can see i've already installed it this will give us uh, networking capabilities and after that we'll have to install relay which will allow us to have online functionality and after you have both of these installs we'll move to the next step which is setting up relay with unity services let's go into edit project settings and then services and here you'll have to select your organization i'll select mine here if you don't have one don't worry i'll show you exactly how to do that and then you create project id we'll visit the unity gaming services website link in the description and we'll sign in okay now that we're signed in i'm going to show you how to create an organization if you already have one you can skip to the next part let's click on profile organization and manage organizations here you'll find an add new button which you'll click to start the setup process. Just go through that and once you're done, you can click back. Cool, next we'll activate the relay service. So to do that, we go to multiplayer and here we have to make sure we've selected the project that we're working on. In my case, it's Oculus Multiplayer Netcode. And now I'm gonna go to relay here, setup guide and go through the setup guide. So go next, next, and then finish. And once you see relay has been successfully set up and automatically enabled, means you're all good. Now we can go back to Unity. Let's start by setting up our scene. To do that, let's search for large room and drag that into the hierarchy. Next, let's search for a skybox. Skybox gradient and drag that in. Now all we need is a VR controller. So let's search for interaction rig and drag the full synthetic one, which is just a, a visual preference so that it shows hand meshes when you're using both hands and controllers. Otherwise, you could use the basic one so that it shows controllers when you're using controllers. And let's not forget to delete the main camera. And let's try it out. Cool. We have our hands and our setup. Nice. Okay, now we're gonna create a quick menu so that we can create a room and join it. Let's click on large room. In here, you'll find an example menu. We're gonna use that but we're going to just take the menu panel because we're going to add our own buttons. So copy that, delete the rest and paste. Now we'll rotate it back to zero and place it right in front of us like so and move it a bit upwards. There we go. Now we're going to add our own buttons here to add the buttons for hosting and joining. Let's search for sample poke button and drag that in. Let's drag it into the menu panel and reset both position and rotation. And now let's change the scale to 0.15 all, on all axes, like so. Now we will um, change the tool handle to local, drag this one a tiny bit up, and then Ctrl D to duplicate it and drag it down. Now all we need to do is change the text in the middle. For the first one, we're going to go into the button, into visuals, button visual text, and we'll change the sample name here into host. For the second button, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to change the text to join. Just like so. The idea here is that we want to click on host, host a room, get a code that the other person enters and clicks on join to join the correct room. So to do that, we need a text input field. We're gonna add that to the menu panel. So right click on it, go into UI and then input field. Now we can click on the canvas, change it to world space, move it to zero, zero, zero. And then here we can change the rotation back to zero as well and scale it down to 0 0.005. Now we can just slide it down and if we want, we can bring it also a bit closer like that. And now for the room code, we're gonna add another element to the canvas, which is a text mesh pro. We can move it up 
and then we're gonna center it make the font smaller around 20 should be fine and type room code there we go great and now we're going to work on the functionalities of these buttons now in order to interact with these ui elements we'll need a couple more things so first we're going to add something called ui helpers and just drag that in you can delete the event system that was added automatically when we added the input field and now we're going to add hand poke interactors so that we can click on the buttons with our hands. To do that, we're going to open Interaction Rig OVR, go into OVR Interaction, open the OVR controller hands and the OVR hands, go into both the left and right hands, and then when you see controller hand interactors, we're going to add the element here and the same goes for the right hand this one as well and that one there we go perfect now one last thing is in here in the OVR camera rig what we want to make sure we have on is this setting right here require system keyboard now this is going to allow it so that when we click on the input field it's going to bring up the virtual keyboard when we have our headset on. One more thing before we try it, we need to add into the canvas a OVR recaster. What that does is that it will allow us to point at the input field and select it. All right, as you can see, we have the buttons that work. Right now, they don't do anything, but we'll add the functionality. And here we can point and select the text uh, input field so that we can type in the room code. Right now, the keyboard doesn't pop up because I'm doing this in the editor, but when we build it in the headset, the keyboard will pop up and we'll be able to enter the room code. A couple things we can do to make it look nicer before we move to the next steps is go to this text and change the font to whichever one you like most. There's a bunch of things you can choose from. I'm gonna go with this one. Then we can go to the input field and we're going to change the color, make it a bit more transparent. And then finally, we're going to go to the menu panel and make it less transparent here so that we get a bit of contrast. Looks great. Now that we have our menu set up, there's still three things we need to add to our project. The first of which being the network player prefab. This is the avatar that's going to be representing you while you're moving around and the one that's going to be spawned in every time a player connects to the server. Next is the network manager. That's the object that's going to take care of TCP IP address and Unity transport, also allowing us to use Relay. And finally, Relay itself, which will allow us to have the online functionality by giving us a room with a code that we can enter so we can join it. We'll start with a network player. For this, I created this package for you that you can find below and that when you download and import it into Unity, it will provide you with this prefab of the avatar. This is the one that we're going to using for this project. Of course, you can edit it how you like, and you can use this as a template to create your own avatar. And you'll also be getting these four scripts right here that we'll be using to set up this project. Let's take a look at the avatar to understand what components he has. First, we have a network object component which will allow this object to be uh, synchronized. This is basically the component that we need to attach to everything that's gonna be synchronized over the network to our clients. Next, we have a client network transform, which is an edited version of the network transform component. But instead of being server authoritative, meaning it needs the confirmation and approval of the server, here it's client network transform, which is client authoritative, doesn't need the approval of the server. And finally, we have the network player script, which uh, determines the position of your hands and uh, head for the avatar. Of course, uh, in this network player, we're also determining it only for your specific player. And we have some offsets here so that you can edit it to how you see fit. Now we're gonna create a network prefab list, which is gonna come in handy soon. We'll right click and press create and then net code and network prefabs list. Now we'll add an element here to the list and 
bring the avatar and place it right here. Now we're gonna create a empty object and call it network manager. And we're gonna add the component to it, also network manager. Here you'll find that we'll need a player prefab so we can just drag that in and drag the network player uh, network prefab list in here as well like so it's asking us to select a network transport we're going to use unity transport and then we'll click on it again and use relay unity transport and now the network manager is set up all right now let's add relay so we'll create an empty again and call it relay now we'll add the script that we had before so go back into assets scripts and drag in relay onto the relay game object and here as you can see you have max players you can put it to eight let's say and it's asking us for a text mesh pro which is a text this is where it's gonna update the room code element that we have here on our menu to be the actual room code when we press host so let's open up the menu panel canvas text and we can drag that text into here like so all right next step now we want to set up the functionality for the host and join button as well as the input uh, field so when we press on host it should create a room and give us a room code and when we press on join it should confirm what we have written in the input field and join the room so let's go into menu panel and we're gonna add this script right here called button functions and we are going to give it the reference to the relay game object as well as a reference to the input field so open the menu panel open the canvas and in here input field put that there now we should open the buttons and we will make it so that when you release the button, we'll give it the reference to the menu panel again and choose a function, button functions, and it's called host. Now the same goes for the join button, add uh, on when release, and then give it the menu panel reference, go into button functions and choose client and now for the input field we're gonna do the same on value change we're gonna add a function here we're gonna give it the reference to the menu panel and button functions and then client input and we're all set let's try it out now when we press the host button we should be expecting this room code to update with actual room code and our avatar to appear so let's do it and here we go we have our avatar and we have the room code this is the room code that we'll be sending over to our friends so that they can enter it and join us and of course i can see some problems here my hand mesh is still visible the one from earlier and we would want that to disappear when we press on host or join next when i look down into my uh, body i can see that it is clipping and we don't want that also i cannot move right now and of course we want to be able to explore this place with our friends so let's hop right into that okay let's fix the small visual issues first and then we'll move on to the movement so let's open up the interaction rig ovr inside of ovr camera rig there's tracking spaces open that and go into the center eye anchor now here you'll find that clipping planes is set to near 0.1 We'll just put it to zero so that we're not clipping when we look down into our body. And we will go now to the buttons. And this is probably not the best way to do it. You can do it so that it's checking if you're connected or not and displaying the hand meshes. But right now we'll just make it so that when you press on the button, the hand mesh disappears. So let's add four elements right here. And we'll open up the OVR interaction hands and controllers and we'll go into the synthetic ones for each of these and we'll drag the ovr left hand visual first into here ovr right hand visual same for left hand visual here and right hand visual here and we're gonna press on the drop down menu then game object then set active to false so that these four game objects disappear when we 
press on the host button. And we're going to go through the same process, but for the join button. So I'll fast forward through it. And now to add the player movement, first we're going to add the collider to the floor. So select the small room and then go to ground and add a box collider. That way we won't fall when we start moving. And then we will go and close that, go into the interaction OVR. And then here we're going to add something called a uh, simple capsule with stick movement. And right now here we, we can change the settings to whatever we want, but I'm going to put the settings that I like here. So an angle of 22.5 and then the speed is going to be 0 0.7. Uh, camera rig, we're just going to get that and drop it here. Now we want to add a capsule collider. Let's put the radius to 0 0.1, the height to 1.5, and the center to 0 0.75 so that it is on the floor. And finally, we'll add a rigid body and we will freeze the rotation here in the constraints on all rotations. Great. And we are officially done. Now let's build it and try it out. So we'll go into File, Build Settings. And if your scene is not visible here, you click on Have it open and then click on Add Scenes. Now we want to switch also to Android so that we can build it directly on Quest and switch platform. This might take a while. Okay, now let's connect our headset to the PC and then check for here if it is connected properly. You can choose Quest 2. Otherwise, you can refresh, but default device should be fine. And now press build and run, then create a new folder called builds. Open it and then name your APK. I'm going to call it online VR and then press save and I'll see you once it's done building. All right, now the application has been successfully installed on the headset. I think the best way to try it out is to send it over to someone else and see if it works. Let's do it. Hi, Ashray. Hey, Dad, what's up? I wanted to ask if you could return the favor by testing my VR app. Yes, absolutely. Let's do it. All right, sounds good. I'll send it right over. See you in a bit. All right, see you. All right, I'm going to press on host. Mm -hmm. Nice, I have my hands. Uh, the code is Q9MQ9K. Okay, Q9M and Q9K. K, yes. There we go. And I click on join. Let me see. Oh, oh there there you are. <laughs> Hi, John. How's it going? Wow, good. You're right in front of me. <laughs> yeah, your character looks way better than mine. Hi. Okay, so this Sorry. works. I think we can give a high five. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right. So this works, I guess. Then yes. Have a nice day. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. And that's it for this video. As you can see, we created a VR app where we can host an online session with the click of a button, send it over to a friend and have them join from wherever in the world they might be. And we can only expand with more features from here, like hand interactions, voice chat and animations, among many others. If you want us to cover these topics, please let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, a like and subscribe would be much appreciated. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.